for this problem, we're given a position function, and we're going to do th three different parts. So here's the first one. Find the body's displacement and average velocity for the interval. Now you might think that velocity requires us to take a derivative like we talked about before, but actually it's not the case for this one. Because it's talking about an average velocity, we have to do this a little bit different. What we're first going to do is find out the total amount of distance that's traveled by this one in the time interval. So we have an interval from 0 to 3 seconds. I'm going to find the position at 0 seconds and then position at 3 seconds and then that'll give us the displacement after we subtract those two. That'll tell us the amount of travels. And then for the average velocity, we're just going to divide that by the total time, which in this case is 3 seconds. So first, let's find S of 0. So find out where is the starting point at 0 seconds, where is it? Okay, so if I put 0 in here, 0 to the 4th over 4 minus 0 cubed plus 0 squared, that's going to give us uh, 0. Next thing is we're going to find S of 3. We're going to find out where it is at the end of the time unit, and we'll subtract those. We'll get the total displacement. So now we're going to put 3 in here, 3 to the 4th over 4, 3 cubed plus 3 squared. If you do all this with common denominators, you're going to get uh, 9 fourths. These should both be in terms of meters. So the displacement here, if they want body's displacement, then you're just going to take 9 fourths minus 0, and that's going to give you 9 fourths meters. So 9 fourths will be the total, the body's displacement in a time interval. Second thing, I want to find the average velocity. We can find that by taking the displacement divided by the total time, which in this case is 3 seconds. We're going to do 9 fourths divided by 3. We have meters and we have seconds here, so when we uh, divide them, we're going to get meters per second. When we flip that, we're going to get 9 twelfths, which is going to be the same thing as 3 fourths, and this would be in terms of meters per second. So here's your two answers. Displacement is 9 fourths meters. This is your average velocity, 3 quarters meters per second. For part B, want to find the body's speed and acceleration at the endpoints of the interval. What we're going to do is we're going to find the velocity and acceleration functions, working with this one here, and then we're going to evaluate it at 0 and also at 3. So first, let's find the velocity. The velocity function is going to be the derivative of this here. Now, we can think of this as a 1 fourth t to the fourth. So what will happen is the 4, when I use the power rule, the 4 is going to come down and cancel the 4 on the bottom. And that's going to leave me with t cubed. So again, what I do there, 4 came down. I, had, I get 4 over 4, which is 1. Subtract 1 from this, that's going to be uh, 3. This one, 3 comes down, minus 3t squared. Using the power rule, and the last one, 2 comes down, subtract 1, and you get 2t. Next, we're going to do the acceleration. Acceleration is the derivative of your velocity. So 3 is going to come down. This one, the 2 comes down and multiplies by the 3. We get minus 6t. And then this one, you get a 2 on the end there. This is going to be your acceleration function. So now that we have both of these, we have to evaluate them at the endpoints because that's what it's telling us to do. So I want to find v of 0. Okay, so 0 cubed minus 3 times 0 squared plus 2 times 0. That gives me 0. Then I want to find v of 3. Again, we're evaluating each one at the endpoints. So 3 goes in this one, 3 cubed, 3 times 3 squared. 2 times 3, we get this. If we work all this out, we're going to get 6. Now, we need to put our units on these. So these are going to be in meters per second. So, again, this whole thing here, if you simplify it, you should get 6 meters per second. Next, let's do acceleration. Acceleration at 0, 3 times 0 squared, 6 times 0 plus 2. For this, the first two cancel out, and we get 2, this is going to be meters per second squared is the units on that one. 
The last one we'll do is we'll evaluate that at 3, a of 3, so we're going to do 3 in here for t. And if we do that one and work all that out, we should get 11, 11 meters per second squared. So now we've gotten the speed is the velocity functions, acceleration, we have these two, and we've evaluated them at the endpoints. For part C, it's asking us when, if ever, during the interval, does the body change direction? So let's think about what that means if something changes direction. If you're moving down the street and you want to change direction, you have to first come to a stop first and then change direction. So I need to first find out where the object actually stops because at that, those time intervals, that could be a possible place where it's going to be changing direction. So I don't know for sure, but I'm, at least I got to find out those uh, time, times first place where it stops. Where it stops, that means it's not moving, that means the velocity is going to be zero. So I'm going to be setting this right here equal to zero. My velocity function was the one that we came up with in part B, and we're just setting that equal to zero. In order to do so, we have to factor to solve that one. You can pull out a common factor, pull out a t, and when you factor that out, this is what you're left with. This part is one that we can do another factoring step. So we're going to factor that one more time. And for this one, you're going to get uh, 1 and 2. Since it has to be negative, both of them have to be negative there. If you set both those, or all three of those, equal to 0, you're going to get t is 0, 1, and 2. So at 0 seconds, 1 second, and 2 seconds, that's the places where it's not moving. But that's not going to be my answer because I don't know if it's changing direction or not. In order to do that, to see if it's changing direction, I'm going to make a chart here. I'm going to put 0 and 3, it's going to be between 0 and 3 seconds, and I have 1 and 2 at my times. I'll put those on here as well since something's happening there, it stops. And I'm going to pick some test points, and I put the test points into my velocity function, and I want to see if I get a plus or a minus. What I'm looking for is if I have a plus to a minus or a minus to a plus. That means it's changing direction because it's moving in a positive direction and a negative direction. So if I see a sign change happening, that's where there's going to be a change in direction. So I'm going to pick a number between 0 and 1. Now you can pick any number. It doesn't really matter which one it is as long as it's between 0 and 1. What I'm going to test is 0.5. So 0 0.5 I'm going to use for my first one. I'm going to put this into all the T's in here and I'm going to work that out. So I'm not going to show all the work for that, but you can put that into your calculator and work it out. If you do all that, you're going to end up with a positive number. The number you get doesn't really matter. You're only concerned about whether that number is positive or negative. So at 0.5, I get a positive. Next, I want to pick any number between 1 and 2. And again, put that back into my velocity function. I'm going to test 1.5. 1.5 I'll put in there for all the t's. And again, I'll work that out on my calculator. Again, the number itself doesn't matter. All you're concerned about is the sign value that you get on it. In this case, you're going to get a negative if you put that number in. And it'll work actually for any number you pick in that interval. You should always get these same answers, as long as you're picking the correct number in that interval, you should always end up with the same result here. That's why it doesn't matter what number you pick, as long as it fits in the interval. This last one, you want to pick a number between 2 and 3, we can test 2.5. Okay, so 2.5 I'll put into my velocity function. If you work all that out, you're going to get a plus as a result. Now looking at this, what's going to happen is it's moving in the positive direction and then it goes to the negative direction. So at one second it changes direction. I also see a change in direction at two seconds. Negative direction and then positive direction. So what I'll put is I'll put this for my answer. It's changing directions at one and two seconds.